Well, good morning and welcome to Pike Tutorials video number two. Thanks to everybody that watched the first one. As I said, the first one was just very basic. This one's not going to get too technical either. As I said, I want to just work up to the technical parts about pike fishing later in the video. So uh, yeah, today I come to a beautiful lake called Buzzbridge, or I should call it Wood Lake, run by Godalming Angling Society. Um, and never ever fished this lake before, but I've been told that it's um, quite an easy lake when it comes to catching small pike jacks. And as I said, that's a great place to start. You don't want to go off to a lake where you're going to sit there for hours and hours and days and days to get one, one, one run and maybe it, you know, it'd be a decent fish because you'll just lose all enthusiasm. And today I'm going to cover a topic um, that I don't normally do when I'm pike fishing, but it's uh, a topic that I did a lot when I first got into pike fishing and that was float fishing, catching lives from the venue, watching that float disappear and uh, it's, it's a really nice way of pike fishing, but it does attract a lot of jack. So obviously I did a bit of homework on here. I've walked around the lake when I got here, a lot of cold water going in the end of the lake, which I would say is the shallow end. Most of the small fish I've seen moving have been sort of halfway up towards the, the, the dam end. So I'm guessing that's where the pike are. I'm gonna try and catch some live baits, which I'm pretty sure I will, because there's small fish showing i run through the rigs on um, on float fishing and as i say you know it's something that a lot of youngsters do or people getting into pike fishing first you do you know the problem is catching your life bait um, i'm also going to cover a few topics like trace making i'm not going to make the traces here i'm going to do them at home cover those and show you a little bit you know close-up work of making your own traces because that's always nice than and it will save you some money in the long run <coughs> hopefully i'll catch a a couple of jacks for you on the float and we can run through a little bit of like handing out um, I've got a different landing net today because obviously I'm allowed to I'm not governed or been told that I have to use a big triangular net which is not what I um, prefer to use and a little bit of unhooking hopefully a bit of fish handling striking nice and early etc etc just recap on some of those but today it's all about kind of like just going through something that's a very enjoyable way of pike fishing. Will it catch you some big fish? As I said, my, I had my first ever 20 um, on a small live bait, but then back in the days when I was about 20, I did most of my fishing was on live baits, you see. Um, I've had a couple of other sort of upper, mid upper teens on that, but generally you're just gonna catch small fish. So let's get fishing and let's see if we can catch a few fish for you. Well, the first thing you need to do if you're going to be live bait in for pike is obviously catch your lives and that can be the hardest part because in the first video what i actually said to you is you need to get your rods out as quickly as possible but if you're going to live bait you can't it sometimes takes you a long time to actually get the fish going and i've been in this swim for about i don't know about half an hour didn't get a bite for quite a time but just keep feeding I've got a little pole float there, size 20 hook. And, you know, one minute you don't think there's any fish here. And the next minute, as soon as that float goes in, you should, you know, I'm getting bites. And most of these are small rud, small roach, and small perch. And that's obviously what the pike are feeding on. So again, you match the hatch. So. Uh, Catching live baits is your first job. Not the easiest sometimes, but once you get them going, you should be able to catch them, as you see, quite easily. Well, I say on venues with lots of small fish, but on some venues, it's impossible. So as you can see, little roach that is, there's no point catching loads. I, I reckon I can probably, if I need some more later in the day, catch some more. At the moment, I've got about five or six. So that'll keep me going. I doubt if I need any more. I'm not expecting to get loads and loads of bites. There are some big perch about in this lake. 
There are, there's another one. Perfect size for pike and perch. Caught from the lake. The rules state in the actual club book that you can actually live bait if you catch your, your bait there, which is legal. Anything else, bringing baits to the water is illegal. So um, if you're gonna use live baits, make sure you've got a rod. This is a 15 foot rod, little pole float. I use this on the, the canal to catch my live bait, size 20 hook, a few maggots and you know spend some time again first light in the morning is best to catch your live bait and it's a good thing that when you've been feeding a spot and you've got some bait going is to put your actual pike live bait there and then feed maggots over the top so obviously you've got a lot of little fish there and then you've got your live bait there so as you can see you've seen me catch some live bait here next job is to get the float out get the rod out and see if we can catch a pike or two okay let's just quickly run through the rig I'm using and it's one of these simple inline sliders and I've got a little float stop here that allows you to adjust the depth so you can fish shallow you can fish deep and you can explore all those depths um, because I've been feeding some maggots out there catching some life baits I'm gonna like go quite deep anyway now, as I said, I've never fished this lake before, so I don't know what to expect. Will I get lots of jacks? Will I get nothing? We'll see. There has been, you know, obviously there's loads of, lo loads of small fish in here, so I'd be surprised if um, a live bait roving, you know, around under a float isn't going to actually get a response. Um, it's not something I've, I do. I can't remember the last time I actually used a float and a live bait for pike. I generally find that a float fishing live baits tends to attract the jacks uh, saying that my first ever 20 uh, from Stillwater Back Lake on a Farnham water was many many years ago when I was about 20 and that weighed 20 pound four ounces so that's my biggest ever pike on a live bait um, but generally as I say uh, you're, you're attracting the jacks and uh, the dead bait in will pick up those bigger bigger fewer kind of uh, slower pike that are more scavengers than chasing fry about so as i said little float stop 15 pound line again inline small inline slider and i've got one of these little egg inline egg that pushes onto the swivel that i you know checked at home that it cocks that float quite low down you don't want your float massive float out of the water because obviously that's resistance so just like any kind of float fishing shot it down using the right weight and then i've got Again, about a 22, 24 inch trace. It's 24 actually, um, wild trace. It's seven strand, 40 pound, down to a single size eight, only a small hook because the baits I found are just small. Obviously, if they're bigger baits, you use bigger hooks, but a size eight. And I've looked at the club rules before I came here, which you need to do all the day ticket rules. And I realize that all the actual points on this hook need to be barbless and it says you're allowed to crush them down so get your big pliers bang crush them down that's crushed down mind you don't actually um, blunt the one of the points and there's your your rig little size eight all barbless on there to keep in with club rules. I've got a little bait saver. Again, last, the first video I never actually explained entirely what this is apart from showing you what the barbed hook. But when you put your bait in the tail of a sardine, your barbed hook comes out the other side and you put your, your bait saver on. So that saves your bait from being ripped off. Sometimes you want to strike out your bait. And in this case, I'm gonna be hooking a small fish in the dorsal so it sits there. And when the hook comes out, cause it's a barbless, I'm just going to put the little bait saver on there to keep your bait on. Again, I'm only going to be using one rod today. I did bring some dead baits. I might try those later, but I'm only here for a few hours. Uh, I got here a bit later than I wanted to because the weatherman got it wrong again and said it was going to be dry and it was absolutely chucking it down when I woke up. So I had an hour extra in bed. But again, this is just for video, so I'm not too worried. So yeah, I'm just going to have a free run in um, live bait under a float 
and see what comes along. You are, I looked at the rules as well, and I'm going to go into sunken float pattern osters in a later video, a bit more technical, and you need to use an uptrace on those. So if you come here and you're going to be fishing a, a pattern oster float rig, check your rules um, because you are going to need an uptrace. But as I said, I'll explain that later. So yeah, let's get out there. Let's get a bait out there and let's see if a jack or two will turn up, which I'm sure it will. Oh, we're away. That's it. Oh, into our first fish. As expected, tiny little jack. Strike early, that's really important. You have to strike early as soon as that float goes. Set that hook. That small bait is gonna be even in a small jacks. So uh, really nice to see that float go straight away. I can't see the hook, it's well I can, it's just in the scissors. So I'm just gonna net this out using one of these pan nets because on this lake I'm allowed to use, I'm not kind of told I have to use a, a really big triangular net. So it didn't take long actually on the barbless hooks. The actual hook is out in the net. There you go, a little jack on the live bait. That's what I was expecting. Nice way to catch them, but as I say, just a small one, which the live baits normally do attract. I literally just moved because the leaves were becoming a bit of a problem and straight away I had a, had a small pike just uh, swell right by my feet and just dropped it down there, shallowed right up straight away. Small jack as we were talking about. Really small they are, but all good fun. And if you're just getting into pike fishing, and obviously you just want to have a little bit of handling unhooking, as I say, I'll just slide the hook, yeah, slide your hand into the gill plate. There's the hook, barbless hook. Out it comes, little jack. Back she goes. So it's a good thing just to move around, keep dropping in different spots, not going to do it too long because obviously that will give you a nice sort of understanding of the lake, where the pike are and if you can find the small fish then sure enough there should be some bigger ones around but I was told this, uh, this lake is full of small jacks and at the moment <laughs> it's living up to its uh, reputation, yeah. Well, as I mentioned earlier, there's different ways or three ways you can hook your live bait. Just try and get myself a bait flag because obviously using the barbless hooks, the bait flag, the little rubber ones are better than the plastic ones. The plastic ones, especially if you're on a barbed, are really difficult to, to get out. So there's three ways you can you can actually hook your live bait. You can hook it in the mouth, just lip hook it. But the problem there is, as I said, the pike swallow the bait head first, so they have to sort of bend the wild trace. Some will hook it in the towel, but I tend to just nick it into the dorsal fin. That way, if you go in the dorsal fin with a live bait, as you can see, it's sitting upright, naturally, more natural when a pike hits it. doesn't matter if it's a jack, if it's a big, big girl, it's going to have that hook in its mouth. So as soon as that float goes, it's just as you've seen twice now, pick the rod up, strike really quickly. One thing I did quite early 
in my pike fishing was decide to make my own traces up. Um, the reason being I could design a trace to a certain specific situation and I could remember fishing quite a shallow lake and I wanted to pop a bait up off its nose sort of thing really close to the bottom that would give it some movement but the lake I was fishing was quite shallow. I was also governed to a certain length of trace and by popping that up it just would have been too high up in the water and that actual rig, that like a hinge rig I called it, caught me loads and loads of fish. So you also get a little bit more joy when you've made a trace and you catch them on your own traces. It might be a little bit too advanced for some of you, but as I said, nowadays, you can go out, you can buy some fantastic components, all compatible with each other. Back in the days I were making my traces, they, um, you know, the components weren't absolutely very good. So I use the seven strand, 40 pound, un uncoated, wire the pipe pro you can get 20 pounds you can get 30 pounds but a seven strand wire is gonna catch you quite a few fish before it kinks so um, and the great thing about making your own traces if you you get a blunt hook you can just cut one off use some of the wire that's still good for certain areas in your in your trace making so as I say you need all the good components these are all compatible with each other I've got a little kind of accessory tray there with some crimps, with some swivels, some taper sleeves, some dumpy sleeves and the hooks. And what I do, I've also cut this to size, to length and I keep it in a rig bin. So uh, it just saves me cutting wire down, it's all there cut to size. So to do or make a trace, and we we'll just go through the single treble hook like I used earlier in the video. I take my wire, I get one of these little taper sleeves that slides on nice and easy. I then pick out a little crimp. I'm going to take my glasses off for this because uh, my eyesight's not as good. Take a size six. I used a size eight earlier in the uh, the video when I was using the live bait. I've already put one of the little rubberized uh, bait savers, bait flags on. I find the, the rubber ones are better than the plastic ones. They can get quite difficult to get off. <laughs> and uh, the little crimp goes on, the wire goes through the eye of the hook, twist it up back and through that crimp again. Pull the crimp up to the, to the hook, get a good pair of crimping tools and then just compress. And that sleeve literally just comes up nice and easy and just snugly pushes up over the hook and makes that nice and neat. I then turn it round, get another one of the taper sleeves on, on it goes, followed by crimp. I then get one of these quality heavy duty swivels, that goes onto the wire, twist the wire round and put it up against the swivel and then just press down and there you have it your single hook trace made within <laughs> you know we're talking seconds we're not talking difficult or you know long to make these and you can make those different lengths whether you're fishing a you know a, a sunken float pattern oster which we we'll come on to later in a video where you only want a short hook link and an up trace so you can actually make rigs for you know different techniques method and situation so there's the single hook and now we're just going to make your twin trace again I cut my wire to about 26, 27 inches because my uh, a lot of the web venues I fish say I have to have a 24 inch trace. So by the time I put all the hooks on, etc., and crimp down, we're down to just over 24 inches. A lot of the ones you buy, you can't buy them at 24 inches. They're a bit shorter. But the club I was fishing where I was using live baits, they, they specify an 18 inch trace. So quite a few you buy would be okay. So again, what we do, is we get a tapered sleeve that goes on to the wire thought it was going to chuck it down with rain again it has been pretty more often than not just lately place your crimp on goes 
the first hook. Hopefully I'm doing a close up here which you'll be able to see and follow a little bit easier. Crimp goes on, pulls up as I've done before and the other traces just press down, pull the sleeve up, tidy that up. So the second hook, turn the trace round and what you need to do is to get your second hook. Here I'm using size sixes, which are a good all round hook. Pull that down onto the wire. Now, three inches from point to point, let's say, is about a good length for sardines, natural roach. You don't want to go too far apart um, or too close. So about three inches apart. Now this is the difficult bit. You hold the wire against the shank of that hook and then you just twist it around the shank of the hook a couple of times and then up and over the top of the hook so it locates between sort of the free the area at the top of the free hooks as you can see that wire goes back through the eye and then that secures that hook onto your trace your top is top one's there second one there three inches apart twist your wire back then you get one of these little dumpy hook sleeves. That falls down. That tidies that up nicely. It just sits there and covers that up. Pull that round again, end of the wire. Tape a sleeve. Another crimp. And then get yourself again good quality swivel bend the line round the, the wire around so as you can see it's nice and supple place that into the crimp pull the crimp up crimping tools crimp down pull your sleeve over your swivel and there you have it a, a twin trace size six to most, well, I would say all club rules and regulations of 24 inches. So nice and simple, gonna save you loads of money. A lot more rewarding when you actually catch a pike and it's on the trace you made. And as you can see, you just get your rig pin, nearly put a hook in my finger, I did. Um, there's a, a pop-up trace that I've made. Again, you can buy pop-up traces. I've got a hinge rig there. You can see some putty on there where I've put a, a swivel on the, uh, the wire just to hold that bait off the bottom. And then all my traces go on this little container into the rig bin. And you've got lots and lots of traces to hand just in case you need them. Well, in the first video, I touched about landing nets and on certain clubs and certain day ticket venues, um, they insist and within the rules that you use a big sort of 36 inch triangular landing net but what you find with those is when you when you go to land a fish that mesh floats and if you've got that trailing hook then that it can get caught in there so um, to me I'm not a great lover of those I use them on the venues I have to use them um, but it's uh, it can cause some serious problems, as I said, with that trailing hook going in to the mesh. But then again, on venues that I don't have to abide by and use those big triangular nets, I much rather use these barbel spoons. And as you can see, where you've got the metal rim, it keeps that mesh apart. So when you've got a fish, if you do want to land it and you've got a trailing hook, you can normally scoop underneath it, keep the pike in the middle, lift. And if that hook does go in the net, it normally goes down into the bottom of the net and doesn't have the, the pike dangling. So I personally prefer these. And don't get me wrong, you know, you can get big pike in here. Uh, the other day I was fishing and, you know, I had a, had a big fish in there. So, um, I, you know, sometimes I do have the big triangular net with me as well. Um, but generally, if I'm on the rivers, 
if I'm on a venue where I know they're going to be smallish pipe, then I prefer using spoon net like this. Well, something I forgot to say in the, in the first video and something really, really important when you start pike fishing is to have your rods already made up. I've got a float rod made up. I've got my snap tackle set up got my rod protectors, they're all ready to go because first light is the most productive time for perch, for pike, for predators. So you need to get to your swim, get those dead baits out straight away, no kind of threading your lines up, setting up your terminal rigs or what have you. Do them at home, get to the lake, get those rods out as soon as you possibly can. Well, we're coming to the end of another very short session again. I didn't get here at first light because I'm doing the video work and um, I think in, personally we've got this on a bad day. I've had two runs, two small, or three runs, two small jacks and I had another run which I, as I struck straight away and the up pulled probably another small jack. So I just think we've had loads and loads of cold rain last night again. The water seems coloured and um, yeah, it just hasn't really fished as well as I thought it would be. But then again, I'm not too sure what to expect uh, from this lake because it's my first time down here. I hope you got a lot from this again. I wanted to cover the, the live bait fishing because I, as I said, it's something I did when I was younger. It's a great way to get into pike fishing come down, catch some, some small fish. It keeps your interest going. I've only fished the one rod, I've moved about and um, you can then progress. But uh, as I said, this is the first time I've actually fished a live bait for pike for, well, I can't remember the last time because generally, as you've seen today, it just attracts small fish. You now know how to make your traces. Um, you know, you can understand why I use the triangular landing net as opposed to the big triangular net, which uh, sometimes we have to, to do. You can see there's still small fish moving out there. So the next video will probably be what we class, what I classify as an in session, where I'll go out, I won't be float fishing lives, I'll be dead baiting somewhere, putting through a lot of what you've seen uh, in the first two videos into practice, and then we are then progress to the fourth video and I'll probably start talking about pop-up traces, popping up baits, uh, critically balanced baits, uh, maybe enhancing baits with colouring and dyes, etc, etc. And um, hopefully, instead of catching just little jacks, which is all, all okay, because uh, it keeps you, keeps you amused, we'll have a few better fish. I'll probably go to somewhere like Frencham Great Pond, where we'll catch less fish, but if it goes, it'll probably be a double. So uh, thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe, put, give us a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've, again, I've enjoyed coming down and doing something different. This is a stunning venue, as you can see in the background. It's still autumn, you know, we're well into November now. The trees are still holding the leaves, but you can't, you know, I, very few places I know that are as stunning as this. Go on. There we go. And a little jack hooked to order as we pack up. Oh no, it's a perch. <laughs> so you never know what's gonna come along. Oh, and it's just fallen off. It was a small perch about probably about 12 ounces. So uh, it's a shame he didn't get in the net, but he wasn't a monster. So. Uh, yeah, as I say, keep watching, keep subscribing, and uh, yeah, meet you soon on the bank somewhere and uh, catch a few more fish.